Yeah, um, I'm Christoph Teter, um, and um, Alex and Christian invited me to, to share some thoughts and what I'm doing. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, and um, I will tell you something about patient experience. We try to make clinics more human, and um, I want to show how we do that. Um, quick question. Are there some architects here? One. Some product designers, service designers. Okay, UX. Okay, right. <laughs> Just to, to have in my mind what, well, so, so I can choose the topics a bit. Um, I um, set up a company with uh, two friends uh, eight year, years ago, Studio Montag, and um, we do user-centered products and services more and more services and um, this is some references some companies we work for and um, then about two years ago something happened that's my mother and my mother got sick she, she got cancer and um, there was the she needed surgery and um, the surgery should take about three hours they said and I was waiting there uh, to to when she wakes up that I can uh, that I'm there for her. And um, I was sitting in a, in a chair that was pretty much like this setting. And it was three hours, three and a half hours. I said, okay. I started to ask some people running. There were a lot of people and um, doctors and nurses running. And I um, asked, eh, can you tell me how is the surgery going or when do, uh, will she come or not? And ah, no, sorry, we didn't hear anything. Ah, sorry, you have to work. And um, four hours, five hours, in the end, it was six hours. So I think the white beard came from this. <laughs> I was shaking. There was like two magazines lying there. I couldn't read at all. And um, then after six hours, a person came. Yeah, OK, everything is cool. Everything was fine. Uh, Sprayed. Um, it's a was a perfect surgery. She is um, she's fine now. She's totally healthy now. Um, so the three hours waiting for nothing and have uh, like being really afraid um, was not necessary. There was just an emergency, so they had a delay. That was everything. So um, the, uh, my shaking uh, was was just not necessary, and it took me a while since I found out like well I'm do product and service design and that's basically what I'm doing for the industries making that the people feel better and the user is fe feeling better and and stuff but uh, giving the user what he needs and uh, I found out well in the health tech door it's much more it's really needed much more than in the industry actually uh, so I started to to um, uh, search for for design and health and I found out well Internationally, there's a lot going on, a lot of companies, big world conferences and stuff. And I dig deeper and um, I found the topic patient experience. It's like user experience, but patient experience. And uh, the, the association for patient experience is uh, 21 years old in the US. So it's an old topic, it's nothing really new. And it, it's in the Netherlands, it's in Sweden, it's in Hong Kong, it's in Austria, uh, Australia, it's everywhere except Germany. Here, the, the topic Patientenerlebnis, Patientenerleben is almost not existing. And um, what is patient experience? Patient experience is pretty much everything in the hospital except the medical stuff. So everything that's not medical is experience. So how's the food? Is it clean? Um, how do I feel? How do um, people speak to me? All of these layers, there are a lot of layers, so we have the, the, per, the communication, doctor to, uh, to a patient or nurse to patient or doctor to nurse. We have the process and procedures like waiting, for, for example. Um, the architecture, of course, human space, that's basically why I'm here tonight. Um, and we have services and the information like how, uh, when do you get the information, how do you get the information, um, do you understand the information, etc. What we find today when, they, when you build new hospitals, that's uh, the 
University Hospital in um, Vienna. They opened it almost two years ago. And um, that's the rooms. Well, that's a, these are rendering. That's a rendering. I don't know if they ended up like this. I think it's quite close. And that's basically not what you want to have to get to get uh, well. So it's um, really bad in terms of um, doing patient-centered uh, spaces. Um, but that's like the new stuff. That's what they're still doing, and they will do the next. 10 years at least. And um, this is the cafeteria where the nurses and doctors, where they eat. And they have a half an hour break. And um, it looks really nice and it's light and it's big and it's inviting and cool so far. And then you talk to the nurses and the staff and they say, well, I have half an hour break. It takes, it's a huge building. It takes me 10 minutes to go there and 10 minutes back. So I have left 10 minutes to pick, my pick up my food and to eat. And that's the time I have to calm down, to, take ener to, get, to get energy, to recover for the next four hours. And in the hospitals at the moment and the next couple of uh, years, there are two uh, less people, two less staff. So they, they work really hard and a lot. So they have 10 minutes to recover. And they do it there where 150 people are in, a lot of people running around. It's, it's noisy and that's pretty much everything you don't need when you want to recover. So this is, it looks nice, nice, uh, nice try, but it's totally wrong direction. That's a bit better. Um, that's the um, hospital in Eisenberg, White Clinic. Um, it's also rendering. I think the end result is also quite close. Um, it looks much better. That's because um, now they try the, the newest approaches to to make it a, a hospital like a hotel, or to make hotel rooms. Sounds better. It's it is better. This, this is better than just white, white ugly rooms. But it's still not really helpful in terms of um, patient-centered design and um, uh, design that helps uh, people to, to, get, uh, to get well. Because if you are lying here the whole day, the other person is watching at you, <laughs> for example. So it's a nice picture, but if you think you lie there for, lying there for four weeks, and all the time someone is watching you. No privacy at all. That's totally crap for a patient. To, uh, for a patient. And there are a lot of little other um, things. For example, you're looking at the, at the ceiling the whole time. And they're just white. Uh, when I was a child, I had this um, wooden ceiling. And uh, when I was lying in my bed, a lot of times I looked at the, all the spots and the lines, how they flew, and it's like watching uh, clouds a little bit. And um, uh, my fantasy uh, made uh, paintings out of it and whatever. So you don't need, um, uh, not, you don't need um, really special things. It's just like some little details you can add just to make it much better. Um, so. That's what, what's happening at the moment. Better, but still off. This is Rotterdam Eye Cleaning. That's a uh, much better example. Rotterdam Eye Cleaning is a private clinic, uh, in Rotterdam, <laughs> obviously, uh, and they were running out of money, no patients anymore, almost, almost dead, the company. So, and then they decided to, to start new, to redo the the whole building and um, do it do it the proper way. And um, now it looks like this. I think, first of all, it looks quite quite nice and sympathetic. But they have uh, they did much more. For example, little details for like this little step for little children. They have a lot of children surgeries, eye surgeries for uh, on children. And so ch children can walk up there and they on eye levels with the staff behind. Um, it gives trust. And then they have these things. Uh, this uh, is uh, done by um, 
uh, schools and art class uh, in the surrounding. So the the uh, um, the boys and girls are uh, all already familiar with this situation. And then when Further, and that's a really nice example, I think, service design. Um, they found out the biggest problem is the biggest fear for the children to get a plant after the surgery. That's the biggest fear for everybody. And um, now they send every, every child a teacher with one of these uh, uh, pictures on the front, a couple of days before the surgery and um, they have to wear it during the surgery, during the day when they arrive. And then they arrive and there's a doctor with the button with the same animal um, like the, um, the, the patient. And they have the same animal in the, of, in the room where the surgery will happen. So there's an emotional a base between the doctor and the surrounding and the patient. So it's a completely different story. So I think this is uh, a really good example. What we want to do now in Germany, because in Germany at the moment, nobody really is, is there to fill this gap. There are some spotlights, um, some, some nice examples starting coming up, start to come up. Um, this is a project in the Charité and uh, it's done with Craft Lab, uh, where Alex is working. Um, they did a, a, I think, three years um, um, a project uh, with this, uh, where they try to find, uh, they rebuilt the intensive care unit. Uh, I think one room with two beds. So you see the light ceiling where some projections going on and the, you can simulate the daylight to give your orientation uh, what time it is. They hide the, all the technical stuff. They put some, some better looking furniture in there and um, they um, uh, um, put a, another wall to uh, that the, the noise is not coming in so it's really quiet in the room. So they put the st stress level down a lot and I don't know my, uh, not the final results exactly but I think it's about 50% less stress and 50% less medicine the patients need now. And this is a really big impact. And in the end, also, I found out during my research that McKinsey says the patient experience will become a, a central factor in Germany. And that, um, that was the final hint to say, OK, I, I uh, built up a new company. It's called 7,3 that's just focusing on this topic, patient experience. And this uh, my network, or start of my network. And um, we are funded, really important for your doctors that we are funded. Um, but the, the thing is how we do this. And um, well, basically we do what, I, what we did, what I studied, I studied product design at the Bauhaus University and in Eindhoven. And um, I'm, we did the last 10 years design thinking. And uh, that's basically what we're doing now for hospitals. Um, and I want to uh, tell you something about our first project now and um, that uh, happened in um, the clinic for geriatric rehabilitation Christophsbad it's in Göppingen close to Stuttgart um, and the TU, TU Munich um, measures everything to find out which results we will have in the end um, if we had an impact or not um, so what we did is, if you know all, because you know all new design thinking, um, it's it's uh, not not nothing so new. We did shadowing, like followed one day a therapist, one day a nurse, and one day a doctor. And um, this is um, the the uh, the the whole um, floor, and um, we, we uh, had a check. What do they do in which room, and where do they do double use or triple use or eight times <laughs> different the eight different things in the same room? And then we talked to a lot of uh, people, like D 
deep interviews, not like checklist interviews, like one and a half hour for one person sometimes, like really going deep. And um, here you can see we also talk to the cleaning em employee or the, the kitchen service, like everybody is working there. And this is, for example, something really, really interesting. We found out this is a cleaning person and she's from South America. And this is the highlight for everybody in, uh, during the day for all the patients. The cleaning lady, because she's so friendly and always happy and always some nice to talk and dancing around. So everybody is really happy when she entering uh, the room and then uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the sun is coming in. So it's a cleaning person that makes a difference. Then uh, we did patient journey map. I think most of you also know what it is and how to do it. And then we uh, see where the hotspots are and uh, where we have to um, have to fix first. <laughs> um, and then we do a co-creation workshop where this is like the, the head, head of the nurses, the head of the therapists, and um, a lot of different people, patients, um, social employees, um, all kinds of, of um, people that are connected to this um, scenario. And they had to build their, their dream, um, dream geriatric center. And then something really important, we presented, they had to pre pre present their ideas um, at the end of the day to the management, to the top management of the clinics. And then they had to discuss what do we want, what do they want, where's the money, how much money do we have, where do we spend the money, what are your needs, blah, blah, blah. And this is really nice. And then we took this as a briefing. So we wrote down uh, the stuff that everybody is happy with. And then we started with the, to, 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 with the creation for the concept of the concept. So it's uh, about spatial design, it's about processes, it's about information design. And we also did some product, some little product things. Uh, I show you mainly the uh, space design tonight. So this is the concept for the room where the patients are the, during their free time. Um, at the moment, it is uh, uh, till now it was that um, there was one room, basically the side. There were some games laying around and um, uh, tables, and most of the time the doctors were using them to make some conferences. And the patients, it was the patients' room; um, they could not enter. So um, now we make this huge, uh, huge uh, market space we call it, and uh, so the same room from this direction and from this direction. And um, here you can see, for example, that we have uh, these little spaces here and here so that you can um, go there with your family and uh, have familiar talks. So it's a bit more cozy. You don't want to uh, sit in the cafeteria to have familiar talks, fami family talks, and um, in the room with two other people lying in the same room. It's also not really personal. So um, we created these little things and they're also, um, the design is different. So there's more modern and there's more Baroque style. So not all, the, the average age uh, there is 82 average. And, um, but not all, uh, all old people like Baroque style furniture. Um, so you can choose where you want to go. And then we have, you can sit high and look outside the window. You could sit on chairs or more on this couch style thing. And um, so you can choose for your individual style what you, what you like at the, in this mo during this moment. And then you have this for the little children, for the grandchildren, if, uh, that they want to come and visit their grandmother or grandfather. And when they come, uh, they make all the people sitting there, all the grandmothers and grandfathers happy watching this child. So everybody's feeling better. So there's a, uh, then there's flexible tables and a lot more. I could talk about this half an hour. Um, a lot of uh, detailed things, oops. And then we have this at the moment. There are two spaces pretty similar like this. So they have some therapy things going on there. We have some chairs and 
this is where you have to, to talk with your family and friends and stuff. This is where you should go. Nobody's going there, of course. And they don't know why. They didn't know why. <laughs> Nobody's using it. <laughs> but uh, now they know. Um, and what we did is that um, we made this uh, like the recreation area. It's really quiet there. We have some, some sound of, the, of trees and, and the forest. We have real plants. And we have some, some um, uh, uh, chairs and uh, some stuff that is our, that's just for you. So you're reading there. You're not talking to people. That's on the marketplace. Um, then we have this garage for the transportation bed because in every station there's a transportation bed they need to to move move the patients but there's nowhere there's space for these and then on a, in a lot of hospitals there is a bed on the uh, somewhere and um, it always looks shitty and it's in the way and then yeah now we have this garage so it's in there it's everybody looks organized and um, and then, pretty much for the for the staff, it's the biggest invention. This room, it's uh, the room where the nurses and doctors work when they're not uh, with the patients. So we have now different um, zones. So you, it's for concentration work, for phone calls and stuff. You can stand up and working. You can make a uh, like group uh, uh, working in groups. In this in this table, but the the most important thing is that um, um, the people said the the staff said we have this big social room to make um, to make our breaks and to uh, to eat our food, but they don't do it. It's really big rooms bigger than this, and um, they don't go there. They eat their their bread and their cake on the on the computer or somewhere around because they say the social room is at, uh, at the end of the floor we don't have the time to go there so it has to be next to it it has to be really close because um, first we we don't have enough uh, nurses and stuff so um, we always have two less people uh, people working and um, there are always questions coming up ah, did you look for this patient or not and then there's a phone call of the family, they want to know something. So during your break, there are a lot of times the people, uh, other nurses come and ask some questions. And uh, so they have to be close, close to this area. And, uh, but nobody knew how to put this social room together with this room, because they, uh, in their minds, they had this big room. But in the end, we found out one maximum, two people doing break at the same time. So the room can be really small. And um, we did this room, and this, uh, it looks different from this room. So you're off. When you enter this room, you're in another world, basically, more Mediterranean style. And we put this room in this room, those, here, this room, there. It's in this big room. It's just in there. So they are inside, but they're off. And this is like. All nurses, when they see this, they like, oh my god, I want to have it. <laughs> it's, it's so basic. But all architects are, are doing it wrong because they just don't talk to the people. They don't know it. It's not because they want to do it wrong, but they just don't uh, know how to find it out. They never learned how to find it out. Um, this is the, uh, how do you say? Um, Backyard, courtyard, courtyard. Uh, and it's nobody's going there, but they want to go there. So we built, we want to build this uh, there. It's like a therapy garden, but it's a camouflage therapy uh, therapy garden because we don't cre want to create this again. That you some do therapy there, and then the other want to do some recreation there, and um, they watch each other, and this is not working. So now we have this hidden things like. There's a hill you can make your walking training or going steps up and down or going this circle or going a big circle. Then we have this here where you um, uh, uh, throw your salads and stuff and you could train, train your hands. And um, we have a lot of these bird houses that they can watch because a lot of people go there and they had their, um, I don't know, they break their leg 
and they will never uh, uh, and they, they live alone in a, in a house they're 82 years old in average and then after this they will not go back home um, they can't um, go in the garden anymore and this gives them some when they go there see, ah, okay can watch birds I can watch plants there are fishes in there so they have the bit this feeding being at home and this is the stage we are at the moment so this is the other corner you saw the, the forest corner and this is now the training corner and um, this is what we did um, uh, the, the last thing we did at the moment we did some prototyping um, just put some tape on the crown and tested the stuff and um, after 10 minutes when we moved the furniture all the nurses came this is not working there's not enough space and uh, <laughs> then we said okay come show me how much space do you need yeah we need like the wheelchair we have really big wheelchairs they have to go through say so, okay can you organize one and then they organized one said oh okay maybe it's working <laughs> <laughs> so after 10 minutes everybody loved the idea before everybody hated the idea just because we integrated them and um, this saves a lot of money I talked to an architect um, they are building uh, mainly um, hospitals and he said I, I didn't see any hospital that was not rebuilt or fi uh, fixed or uh, rebuilt two weeks after opening every hospital and I thought okay maybe you have to rethink maybe the processes or something and um, that's what you save with this not every there are other reasons of course it's not just the reason there are a lot of reasons why this is happening the te technical stuff is uh, changing a lot uh, so and uh, uh, to build a hospital takes uh, uh, really many years um, but this is one thing test it really quick and if this is not working okay take the tape off and then we come up with another idea it costs almost nothing so at the end of my talk uh, I want to say let's co uh, collaborate to make hospitals more human let's work together instead of architects doing this and designers doing this and UX designer doing this we have to put our heads together and make hospitals more human. Right, thanks. <laughs>